Okay, hello everyone. My name is Terhi Ylirisku, as Alexandra perfectly pronounced. So, first of all, I want to thank Alexandra and Jukka over here, who organized so that I'm here today. So, I come from Finland. I'm a language teacher in a high school, so my students are from grade 7 to grade 9. So, they are from 13, 14 to 16-year-olds. But today, I'm not going to talk about language teaching, but I'm going to talk about Kiva School. So, uh, the thing that I'm going to talk about is called Kiva School, and it's an anti-bullying program. And um, I've worked with Kiva School for maybe eight, nine years, ever since we launched it in, in our school. But uh, I'm not part of the research team that has developed this. I'm just a teacher who utilizes this program with my students whenever we need it. So, uh, in my school there are eight teachers who belong to a Kiva team. And we are the ones who tackle the actual bullying cases in our school. Uh, you can see the name of the program, Kiva and it comes from the Finnish words anti-bullying, against bullying. But also the word kiva means nice, and that's something that we usually start with, with our students, by telling them that it's our job to make sure that it is nice for all of our students to come to school every day. And if it isn't, it's our job to do something about it. So. Today, I will shortly introduce the program, the back, background of it, and then mainly I will be talking about how my school uses this program, so the things that we do in practice. Kiva School is a research-based anti-bullying program, so a lot of research went into it before it was actually used in schools. And it was developed at the University of Turku in Finland. And uh, one of the things that uh, shows how important the subject is, is that the research fi uh, got funding from the Ministry of Education and Culture. So it was thought that this subject is so important that we will give funding to develop something about it. So, uh, Kiva School program has uh, three separate aspects to it. First of all, there are a lot of preventive actions that we take. And then there's the actual intervention when bullying takes place. And then there's a continuous monitoring to it. Uh, next, we're going to take a look at a video. And this one is the official trailer for Kiva program, so this is not done by me, but this is from the University of Turku.
Okay, and this is my school, Rieskalahde School in Turku. So the next part will be about us implementing this Kiva School program with our students. So, first of all, the preventive part of the program. So there are these uh, universal actions that include all the students in our school. And we have these Kiva lessons with the form teacher, so each class will work with their form teacher and have a Kiva lesson. Uh, then we have the intervention part, which means that we have indicated actions that only include those students who have been involved in bullying cases. So that means that we handle the bullying cases. And the last part, the monitoring, is an annual questionnaire that we fill in. Our students fill it in and also the form teachers fill it in. And that's how we get information on how we have succeeded in implementing the anti-bullying actions. So, about the Kiva lessons that we have, so five times during each school year, we have a Kiva lesson. So we leave languages and maths and everything, and we have a Kiva lesson. And uh, our team, our Kiva team, has planned the lessons beforehand and has uh, written down instructions for the form teachers so that when they go into the classroom, they know what to do with their students. And uh, all of our teachers have their own Kiva guidebook, Kiva man manual, so that they can find the exercises that we do and all the instructions and helpful questions and background information and everything in the guidebook. So, uh, our Kiva lessons that we have, they may include, for instance, uh, conversation topics, such as what does it mean to respect someone, or how do you communicate respect? So the form teacher will introduce the topic and will lead the conversation with the students. And usually they will write down notes in their Kiva notebooks and there will be some kind of a, a board where we write down the most important things that we've come up with. Also, uh, we've got loads of videos that we can use so that we will watch the video together and then have a discussion about the video. So one of the videos has a Finnish artist who talks about her own experiences when she was bullied as a teenager. And after the video, the teacher can take the helpful questions and go through them with the students. For instance, how was that person bullied and why? Why did it happen? Was there somebody there to help her? or why didn't her friends help her. So the Kiva guidebook for the teacher uh, works as a help during the lesson so that if you get stuck with the students, because you all know that 14-year-olds don't necessarily want to answer the question, uh, did somebody help her? And why didn't they do that? They can just say, stay silent and wait for the lesson to end. So there's a lot of help for the teacher like you can bring up these things to get them think about the subject. And then we've got different kinds of exercises that we do. So almost every Kiva lesson has some kind of an exercise that we do in practice so that our students will learn by doing. And they have to work together to make the exercise work. Sometimes the whole class, 24 students, work together Sometimes we've got small groups or pairs and sometimes we've got exercises that they will do individually. For instance, we will make a statement and you will express your own opinion like I agree, go to this end of the room. I don't agree, go to this end of the room, for instance. And then uh, there's the virtual Kiva learning environment that we can use so that our students can play games, or they can practice bullying situations that they can encounter, and what to do when they see bullying or if they are being bullied. So we use that as well. And uh, now I've got an example of a Kiva lesson that we did this year with our eighth graders. 
So we always have uh, separate classes for 7th graders, 8th graders and ninth graders so that they all have their own program during the lesson. So, 8th graders had positive feedback as a topic and their exercise was called a piece of paper on the back. And after the exercise, we had a conversation about this topic and about how the exercise actually went. And the form teacher's job is to monitor the exercise so that the students will stay in the subject and they will be positive. And also the form teacher will lead the conversation afterwards so that they will analyze together what did we just do, how did it go, what was the goal for this, did we succeed, and so on. And here you can see a couple of my students, Gertu and Akseli. Akseli is just helping Gertu to get started with the exercise. And here they are doing the actual exercise and enjoying it, as you can see. So the students got instructions beforehand. They were supposed to take a piece of paper and have it taped on their backs. And then they took a pen and went around the classroom and wrote down nice things about each other. So the instruction, the first one was to write down why this particular person is important in this class. So things like, you make me smile in the morning, or you ask really good questions in the history lesson, or it's never boring around you, or something like that. And the other instruction was to stay positive. Okay, let's try this. Some of you came here with friends and colleagues so that you know each other, right? I would need maybe 10 volunteers here in the front. Would some, maybe 10 people, could you please come here? And I have an assistant, very efficient one over here to help you guys. Okay. One, two, three. More, please. Okay, you can stay here and she will help you. So, in the classroom, the students taped the papers on each other's back because that was like the first thing to do together. So, in order for this exercise to work, you need to help each other. In the classroom, the students know each other. They have been in the same class for some time and when we did this they had worked together for two years so they really know each other so it's easy for them to write down things about each other uh, we don't necessarily know each other so i think that we're going to have more superficial instructions for this so you just need to write down something positive about the other person something like i really like your smile it's nice to be here with you. And sometimes this can be really difficult for our students. Some of them are really shy, as you can imagine. But uh, usually the part about taping the papers onto each other's back relaxes them. Because they keep falling down and you have to pick them up and tape again. And, and you have to touch each other to get it done. Okay, you can begin writing positive things. I will give you a couple of minutes to go through and write down on the papers and then we will take a look at what you've achieved. And this is what happens in the classroom as well. They form a line quite quickly. And this is really nice because we do it at the end of the school year. It's one of the last school days in May or sometimes in the beginning of June. And when they have done the exercise, they can take the paper with them and take a look at it and see what, what the other students have to say about them. And then they can take it home. So.
I can spy a little. Okay, some of them are writing in languages that I can't read. Really pretty hair. That, that can lighten up someone's day. Really pretty hair. You are brave. And someone can come and read the Romanian ones and translate, because I can't, unfortunately. And now you get a memory of this day. Yeah, okay, so... You're really nice. You're really nice, okay. You are an awesome volunteer. Yes, she is. <laughs> she really is. You are a brave person. Well, you have to be if you volunteer to come, come up here and write down stuff on others' back. Okay, you express optimism was one of the things written down. You're quite cute. Lovely. Why didn't I participate in this? <laughs> You're full of positive energy. Pardon? You've got a beautiful smile. You're wonderful. You are my best friend and I like being with you. <laughs> teammate. You're a good teammate. You're really good at this. <laughs> you just keep going. <laughs> and as you can see, it creates kind of positive uh, buzz when the students go around and they want to see what's written on your back, what's written on my back. You're a true friend. You're a true friend. <laughs> You're a f wonderful friend. What do we have? You inspire children. You inspire children. As the sun shines the day. These are lovely. You inspire me with your love for teaching. <laughs> nice hair. <laughs> you make me laugh. And the idea in the classroom is that each student writes for every paper, so that if there are 24 students, you will write down 23 papers, so that you say something nice about each of your classmates. Okay. Yeah, it takes quite a long time, but it's worth it. <laughs> okay, thank you so much for our volunteers. Okay, in the classroom, after we've done this exercise, we try to calm down the students so that they will sit down and be quiet and ready for the conversation after they've been moving around the classroom. And uh, the question for the students is, uh, why is it important to give positive feedback? So this is what we will talk about. And again, the uh, teacher will have leading questions so that they can take the conversation forward. And also the other side, that uh, if you have classmates that you don't like that much and you still need to write something positive about them, so can you do it? And the teacher can give helpful advice on 
practical things that you could write down for each other so that you, you could find the one thing in each of your classmates. So, uh, the next thing to discuss is uh, why are we willing to give up our language lessons, for instance, five times a year to have a Kiva lesson instead? Because we do that every year, and you all know that there are some uh, festivities and uh, exceptional schedules and everything that you lose your lessons so usually teachers don't want to give out their lessons but we have specific goals for give our lessons and we feel that they are really important so that's why we have them every year so one of the goals is to raise the students awareness of bullying so that they know what we are talking about when we say bullying so that they can recognize it and the next thing is to encourage them to talk about bullying. If they are being bullied, that they would come forward with it and they would take the matter to the adults in the school. And the same thing, that if they see that someone else is being bullied, that they would talk about it out loud. Uh, we feel that if we can promote class unity, if the students feel like, it, it, this is a good class to be in, I can be myself in this class and I, I trust the other members of this group. That will reduce and prevent bullying. And also, Kiva lessons are planned so that they would enhance students' social emotional skills so that they would be better, better able to function in a group and they would help each other and be uh, empathetic towards each other. Okay, now we are moving on to the second part of Kiva school program, which is the intervention part. So what happens when a bullying case emerges? So these actions include only the children or the teenagers who have been bullied or who have bullied others. And uh, one of the things that we also do is that we try to find classmates that could help the victim of bullying. And usually this is done by the form teacher and not the Kiva team. So the form teacher will try and identify which one of the students could help the victim and could stay by his or her side. And the aim of these actions, of course, is to end the bullying. So, in practice, when a bullying case emerges in our school, uh, the first adult who gets the information will write it down. So, for instance, if I get a message from a parent saying that uh, my daughter Anna is being bullied, then my job is to go and get a Kiva form number one, and write down all the things that I've heard. And uh, this can be any adult in our school, so it can be the school nurse, it can be one of the teachers, it can be a school assistant, whoever. But if we hear about bullying, we need to write it down in a formal give up form number one. And this is the actual form, and once you have filled it in, you take it to the Kiva team. And um, we in Kiva team will go through the form and uh, we need to decide if these events count as bullying. Because sometimes it can be unclear for parents, for students, even for the teachers, if it's a case of bullying or if it's a fight or a misunderstanding or an argument. Because not every argument or fight in a school counts as bullying. We have a specific definition of what counts as bullying. So when it's something that happens repeatedly against one person and it's harmful to that person, then it counts as bullying. So a separate incident of a fight between two students isn't bullying. Uh, if we in the Kiva team see that this is actually a case of bullying, then we will take action. 
But if we think that no, this is a misunderstanding or this is just a minor argument, disagreement between two students, then it's the form teacher who will handle it. Because he or she will know the students best and it will be better for them to go through it than to take the actual Kiva team involved. Okay, when we begin tackling a bullying case, there's always two Kiva teachers involved. And one of my colleagues just told in a teacher's gathering that this is an exceptional way of being in contact with your students because there's only one student and two teachers. We are used to the fact that there's one teacher and 24 or so students, but this is something else. This is something totally different. It's a, sometimes it's really good to have this situation where there are two adults talking to one student. So the first thing that we do is to find the victim, talk with him or her, and write down everything. So we will write down description of the events, what has happened, names of the people who have bullied him or her, and also names of the pupils who could support the victim if the victim can name somebody. If they can't, then we will ask the form teacher to help us with this. And after talking to the victim, we will find the perpetrators and talk with them individually. So if there's like three people bullying one student, we will try to find those, those three students during the same day and talk with them individually so that they wouldn't know what the other person said. So there's a surprise effect for the perpetrators. And the actual conversation that we have with them, we will write that down as well. But uh, the main thing in the conversation is that uh, we are not trying to find out what happened because we already know what happened. We are there to say that we know what has happened and what you have done, and now it needs to stop. And the goal for the conversation is that the perpetrator will understand that, okay, I've done something wrong, and I have hurt someone's feelings. So that if there was a girl called Anna, who doesn't want to come to school because uh, she's feeling sad because the others are bullying, bullying her day after day, we need to tell that to the people who are bullying her. We need to make sure that they understand that you are hurting someone. And we try to raise a mutual concern for the victim so that we come to the conclusion that we all want this school to be a place where it's nice to come here so that all the people who come here every day, they like to be here and it's nice for them to be here. It's not difficult or depressing or scary to come to the school. And um, when we write down the things on Kiva forms, we also write down a promise from each perpetrator. So you heard Tim talk about responsibility, that in Finnish schools the students have a lot of responsibility. The same goes here. The responsibility is on the students. They have to do something differently so that the situation will become better. So the perpetrators will make a promise, one step that they are going to take so that the situation will improve. Also, the victim makes a promise because it's never black and white. So the victim also tries to reflect on on his or her own behavior, if there's something that he or she could do differently in the future. Then there's a waiting period for one or two weeks. And after that, we have a follow-up meeting. First, we talk with the victim to see if, if things have gone for the better, if the situation is better. And then we will talk with the perpetrators to see if they have kept their promise. And of course, during the, the waiting period, we will keep an, a close eye on 
the victim and on the perpetrators as well. And this time we will use forms five and six to write down everything. In case you're wondering what happened to number four, there's a give up form number four as well. Uh, it's used when you have all the perpetrators together in a group conversation and you write down all the information from that. But we don't use that at, uh, in my school at all. We only use the separate conversations with each perpetrator. And the last part, the monitoring part, uh, there's constant monitoring of the Kiva program so that we know uh, into which direction we're going in our school. So what kind of changes are taking place? And this part is done online. So we fill in the questionnaires and we get feedback and we can use that feedback to work forward and also we can use it for instance when the parents want to know what's the situation in this school then we can show the results that we've gathered from the Kiva, Kiva online tools. So we get annual feedback. All the, all the schools that participate in Kiva program get annual feedback so that we know which way we're headed. So then the sad part, what if this doesn't work? If we have all the conversations and it doesn't work? As I said, the responsibility is on the students. They have to handle the situation, which means that initially when we have the conversations, we will inform the parents, just saying that, okay, your child has been talking with the Kiva team, and these are the two members of the Kiva team that were handling this situation, so if you want to know more, you can either ask your child or you can contact us. But we don't give any punishments for it. But if the situation doesn't get better, then we can contact the parents as well and see if that helps. If it doesn't, then there's the usual school sanctions that can be used, which we don't normally have to use at all, but we can assign detention, for instance, for a student, if they've been bullying somebody and they don't learn their lesson. Or some, some years ago, we actually had to leave one kid behind from a field trip as a, as a punishment for bullying. But the normal program, it doesn't use punishment at all. It's based on conversation and realizing the meaning of your actions and what you do to another person. And then in the worst case scenario, if the bullying has been really severe, it's lasted for a long time or it has involved violence, then we can actually contact the police. So it's also a crime if you hit someone at school. So we can also involve the police in this. Uh, last school year, we had 21 cases that we handled with our Kiva team and we were able to help all the victims. Some of the cases weren't actual bullying, they were more of a disagreement or misunderstanding, but we handled 21 cases, the eight, eight Kiva teachers that we have. Uh, I've worked with this program for maybe eight years and it's been really rewarding because I can be in contact with my students in a whole other level and also I can see sides of the students that I don't get to see in everyday work. And I'm always happy to see that it works. It's such a simple procedure but it works amazingly well and in a positive way. It's easy to use and it's like a backbone to our work that we can use. If you want to find, find out more about Kiva, Kiva School Program, you can find, in, find it online. And thank you for your interest on the subject. Hi, thank you very much for sharing this with us. I'd like to ask you if this program is nationally developed or because in my previous school in Singapore, we created our own anti-bullying syllabus. 
So like for 8th grade, ninth grade, 10th grade, uh, and so on. This is for the whole comprehensive school. Okay. But not all, not all schools in Finland take part in this. Okay, so it's not a compulsory uh, no, program? No, it's not. Okay. No. Okay, and do you adjust it according to the school? Because I, um, I presume you've got different nationalities or different backgrounds in your school, or it's... It works the same for... It works this pretty much the same. Okay, yes. okay, thanks very much. I don't actually have any stati statistics, so you, you need to find that information elsewhere, but it isn't, it isn't uh, anything alarming, I would say. And according to the results that I've seen, it's gone down with GIVA program, like steadily going down, just in the schools. Yeah. So if there's bullying on the street, uh, some place away from the school, you don't, you don't know about it? No. We have strict uh, like regulations about what to handle and what to not, mm -hmm. and it's only the things that happen in school. So they don't... You don't have problems on the street that come back into the school? Then we handle it. If okay. it comes back, back to the school, if it affects learning and if it affects the students at school, then we will handle it. Is the guidebook um, available in English or in online? Uh, it is available, but uh, you would have to contact the University of Turku, the actual official Kiva program, because they have official channels where they import to new countries. So it's always a uh, nationwide decision to join in Kiva program. And as I said, I'm not part of the actual program. I'm just using it at school. Uh, when you have the discussion with the students, the parents are not involved at the first time? No, not at all. And you are allowed to do this? Yes, yes we are. Okay, and what it means detention? Pardon? A detention, what, what for oh, students? So, oh, so you have to stay after school, sit and stare at a wall for, for 45 minutes. In school? Okay, thank you. How are kids with disabilities treated in this program? Disabilities? Yeah. I, I actually don't know. Autism, things like this. Uh, we don't have any, anything separate for disabilities. We use the same format all the time. In a society where students are a bit reckless, would you say this program is more efficient than actual school sanctions and why? Yes, I would say that it's more effective because it's more positive as well and there's reflection so that you actually have to do reflection on I've done something wrong and I've caused this other person to for instance stay at home not come to school and it usually works there are many cases where the bully hasn't even realized that they've been bullying someone <laughs>